I'm a medical maker. And makers use their hearts, hands, and minds to work together to make the world a better place. I make 3D printable medical supplies. My father carries a doctor's bag of medical equipment when he makes house calls. I've been studying how doctors can use portable 3D printers to make medical supplies. This is me with my 3D printed selfie. And uh, you're all welcome actually to take a selfie with the Star Trek selfie. To 3D print something, you need a 3D digital model, the physical object you want to print, design software to make edits, a printer, and printer material. And having a 3D printer is like having a 3D photocopier. And there are many names for 3D printing. You may have heard terms like additive manufacturing, or digital fabrication, or rapid prototyping. These all mean the same thing, except 3D printing or Star Trek replicators sounds way cooler. So this is sped up video footage of a ground version of the first 3D printer uh, in space. Uh, sorry, this is sped up video footage of a ground version of the first 3D printer that was launched to space, printing a dental tool I helped design. And it works just like a desktop 3D printer. A plastic strand feeds into a printer head, which heats up the plastic so it melts. The printer deposits the liquid plastic onto a platform, and once a horizontal layer is printed, that platform drops down, and the next layer gets printed. And this process continues until you have the final three-dimensional uh, shape of the object. So Star Trek replicators are real. The first 3D printer was launched to the International Space Station last fall. And you're looking at the first functional object that was 3D printed in space. It's a casing panel for the uh, printer extruder, which holds wiring in place. And because the first object printed in space is part of the printer itself, this means that the first Star Trek replicator is partially self-replicating. <laughs> and because some 3D printers can print their own spare parts, it's a good idea to take two 3D printers in case one printer breaks and you need to a print a replacement part. With 3D printing, physical objects can now be stored as digital files. It's now possible to email hardware across the globe or uplink supplies to space. This astronaut is holding a tool that was custom designed on the ground, uplinked to the space station, and printed in space. You can download this tool file for free off the NASA website and print it at your public library. So astronauts can't take everything they need with them on a long space mission. In the future, they will need to bring or uplink digital files so they can 3D print supplies, spare parts, and even habitats on site. 3D printers are portable. I brought my 3D printer with me uh, inside a carry-on suitcase to the Mars Desert Research Station. I used solar energy to power my 3D printer to make medical supplies. When I returned home, I had those medical supplies uh, tested by clinic staff uh, to see if they worked properly, which they did and I had printed a custom finger splint to treat an injured crew member, a scalpel handle if we had to perform surgery, and a dental tool to replace the lost filling. There is a desperate global shortage of skilled workers who can make custom medical supplies like splints or prosthetics. If somebody injures their hand, they may have to wait and travel a long distance to see somebody who can make a custom splint. But now it's possible to go to a local clinic. The staff there can select a file from a digital catalog, take measurements, use software to create a digital file of a custom splint. And this file can be 3D printed on a 3D printer at the clinic, public library, or local 3D print shop. This is much more convenient and cheaper for a patient because now they don't have to miss work and pay travel costs. And for some people, 3D printing may be the only way they can access or afford medical supplies. There is a very common hand injury called a mallet finger, which affects nearly three quarters of a million people worldwide every year. If you fall or if uh, an object hits your finger, you can actually rip the tendon off your finger bone, which causes your fingertip to droop like this. The proper way to treat this injury 
is to have a trained hand therapist make a splint that's custom fitted to your finger because you have to wear the splint nonstop for two months. If this injury is not properly treated, you can develop permanent crippling hand deformities. But the problem is, is that there are no hand therapists or specialized splint making equipment in space and in many places around the world. But what if a doctor's bag was a 3D printer? So at the Mars Desert Research Station, I showed it was possible to use a portable 3D printer to make custom mallet splints for different crew members. You take some measurements, you put them into software, which creates a digital file of a custom splint. Then you 3D print that file. And you add some Velcro. But there's lots of Velcro in space. So I now have a print slot reserved on the space station to 3D print medical tools. And I designed a mission badge for this project. And two of my engineering interns helped digitally sketch the badge elements. The red planet depicts Mars. The Earth symbolizes global health. The star pattern in the upper half is the constellation sculptor, because 3D printing is a form of digital sculpture. And the logo merges with electrocardiogram waveforms on both sides to signify that health and wellness are the project goals. The space station is powered by solar panels. So I used solar energy to power my 3D printer to make medical supplies at the Mars Desert Research Station. Over one billion people live without access to electricity. In many remote places, simple medical items are expensive and can take weeks to months to arrive at a clinic. When I returned home from my Mars analog mission, I built and tested a solar-powered, ultra-portable, plug-and-play, 3D printing system. So medical workers traveling to remote communities can bring this with them to make a range of low cost medical supplies on site. Having this system fit inside a carry on suitcase allows for safer handling of delicate printer components and saves money by avoiding checked baggage fees. <laughs> I wanted this to be a plug and play system so it would be simple to use. I used ready-made parts and published my design in a medical journal so other people can build their own suitcase solar-powered 3D printers. There's a saying that if you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. If you teach him how to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. When doctors join humanitarian medical missions, it's often only a temporary solution. But if medical mission staff take suitcase solar powered 3D printers with them, they can leave them behind after teaching the clinic how to print their own medical supplies. So today I've shown you it's possible to use low cost portable 3D printers powered by off-grid renewable energy sources to make medical supplies locally to serve the over one billion people who live without access to electricity and who reside in medically underserviced regions. Our mission is to bring innovators, healthcare professionals, and patients together to create affordable, quality tested 3D printable medical solutions to deliver health care in the most challenging places to those who need it the most. Contact me if you want to get involved. Thank you.